There you are again, meeting us at his pasture. You have reached worship celebration. We started a message this morning on the fifth day of September, 2021. And uh, since we were unable to finish it in the uh, appropriate time, we wanted to come back and finish it this evening. And so uh, let me uh, call your attention once again with your Bibles open back to Genesis 42, 28. And uh, this time I'll actually read that from the new King James Version uh, instead of the King James Version that I typically read out of, which is not the new but the old King James Version. But let's begin once again inviting God to have control of His Word over our lives. Father, we thank you for your love and your grace, for all the goodness that you pour upon us, even the very breath that we inhale to our lungs and exhale. Let us inhale the righteousness of God and exhale the sin in life. Thank you, Father, for your love and grace. Have your way in our hearts and be glorified in all things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, we're going to look again, and we'll not cover the same material we did this morning as the introduction to this message, but we've already asked the question, listen for it again, as I read the 28th verse in the 42nd chapter of the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, chapter 42, verse 28. And so he said to his brothers, my money has been restored, and there it is in my sack. Then their hearts failed them, and they were afraid, saying one to another, what is this that God has done to us. What is this that God has done to us? And as I left you earlier in the day when we started this message, we might have to ask ourselves, have I ever asked that question? Maybe you asked that today, yesterday, last week. People tend to be very superstitious and they're superstitious because they they form a fantasy in their mind that they are good that they are not a bad person and you don't have to be a bad person but you do need to understand that we, according to God's word, God says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, whether or not you call that bad or not, and, and indeed, I don't know anything worse, but invariably, you and I, as we are compared to God and his moral law, his spiritual guidance, instruction manual, his Bible, the Word of God, when we compare ourselves to the Word of God, the living Word of God, we see that there is a great discrepancy between what we do and who we believe we are and what we are morally. I've spoken on them, those items of being spiritually dead in the past. I've talked about sin and how sin came about, and that you and I, as a sinner, stand condemned. Without the agency of the Lord Jesus Christ, of his saving knowledge in our lives, you and I will stand before 
almighty judge and give an account to him for ourselves. And there's only one question that will be asked you, only one, and that is what have you done with Jesus Christ? You see, since Jesus has made a way for all to come to Christ, all, uh, all to come to God, he has made that way. He said, come unto me, all ye that are burdened and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And if we say, well, I don't believe, and I'm not religious, and I'm not this, and I'm not that, and I won't. I want you to know you're copying an attitude that was actually spawned in the Garden of Eden. Not only with Adam and with Eve, but everyone since. Well, my pen is reflecting that light, and uh, so don't be alarmed. It's not my heart bleeding through. And so invariably, you and I need to ask that question. The question that was posed for us in this verse, the 28th verse of the 42nd chapter in the book of Genesis. And again, hear what it says. What is this that God has done to us? People, we ask those questions because we, we, we come at God from an entirely different position than God holds for us. God created you and I to live for him, to serve him, to glorify his name, to give thanks unto him, to fellowship with him, to enjoy his presence. And what we have done by our rebellion, saying, Lord, we can't do it because, you know, the, the, the devil said that if we did this, we could be like you. And so we make our own minds up and we do our own thing. But you see what the devil didn't say. He only told you a half truth. He didn't tell you that you would die a second death and die eternally separated from God. And that he was not the Savior, but in fact, he was the destroyer of all humanity. For you see, the scripture says he is the deceiver of the world. He has deceived every single man and woman, child, on the face of this earth and continues to do so until the final battle, when Jesus shall defeat him and throw him into the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone, where he shall be forever and ever in utter torment. No question about it. What is this that God has done? You might be asking that about America. You might be saying, man, what is going on? Man, I want, a, I want the good old days. I want the old guy. I want this guy. I want this. I want to get back to when gasoline was 65 cents a gallon. Well, obviously, you don't live in California, I can tell you that. Because I see already in California a number of places where gasoline for premium is already five and a quarter a gallon. But you see, those that want to control the system, and those that want to control the system so they can control you, they will do all that they can because remember, it was Satan that said, did God really say you have to not eat this? Ah, you won't surely die. Go ahead. Looks good, smells good, tastes good, is good. And that is a bold face lie. So, as we looked at the question and the presupposition of that question, we learned of the spiritual principle this morning of ask, seek, and knock. 
So what are we asking? Number one, we're asking God. You and I are asking, God, are you trying to get my attention? You see, that's what they were saying. They said, look at this. We opened up our sacks. Look, our money is in our bag. We, we left it. We gave it for the grain. And oh, no, they're going to tell, they're going to pass rumors and tell them that we're thieves. We stole. And we didn't. Look, who put the money back in our sacks? We gave it to them. Look, here it is in the sack. They were really psyched out. And so what you and I need to do when we're faced with that question, what is this that God has done to us? What has God permitted to take place around us? So it looks as though our entire world is crumbling. Maybe your job, maybe your children, maybe all kinds of things where you feel like somebody other than yourself is manipulating your life to the tune that they want to control you, to tell you what you will believe, to tell you how you're going to believe, and what you'll do for them and not for yourself. Well, when you're faced with that question, and if you've asked yourself that question today, first of all, ask God, Lord, are you trying to get my attention? Oftentimes, God uses tribulation to get our attention, because otherwise, when things are going good, you ask someone, uh, what, what do you believe about God? They just say, listen, I don't have time. I'm playing a volleyball game. We're ahead by two points. We're going to win this game. Leave me alone. I'll talk to you later. No one has time for you. They don't have time for themselves. How in the world do you think they will have time for you? Ask God. God, are you trying? to get my attention and then wait for his answer and he'll send an answer he'll send an answer and you will get clear indication that he is trying to break through your defense mechanism he is seeking to break through your outer stronghold where Satan has you entombed. You thought it was a stronghold. It was a coffin. Secondly, think about those things, those people, those events in your life recently where you may have wronged someone. Perhaps a neighbor. No, not the person that lives directly next door to either side of you or front or back, but that neighbor, that one that you could have reached out to them in the love of God, for the love of God, and sought to know what God's purpose was about this person. This some event that you had part in. Think about that person, that anyone that you may have recently wronged when you ceased or did not develop a love for your neighbor. For the scripture says, the greatest commandment is you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do you know anybody out there that you're not loving like you love yourself? And let me quickly say, if you don't, you may be lying to yourself that you love yourself. You may actually be so disgusted with what you have done that Satan has deceived you to believe that you are a disgusted rat 
and you deserve a devil's hell? And you said, yep, I do. I do. I deserve a devil's hell. And he says, here, I've left the front door open for you. If you don't find it open, the key is under the doormat. Just come on in. He wants you to be in a hell with him so he can have a party. The unfortunate thing the darkness will be so thick, though there's a fire, the darkness will be so thick, you will not be able to see the nose on the front of your face. Think about that someone. And if you have wronged someone, and you haven't loved them, as the scripture admonishes you and I, teaches us, leads us, to love them as we love and care for ourselves. If you've not genuinely done that, if you've shown disdain, hate, bigotry, should we even say it? The coined word today, racism. Folks, the only racism there is, is that racism that was perpetrated by Mr. Charles Darwin who perpetrated that in his outlandish origin of the species. If you look at the subtitle of that, for the preservation of favored races, you see Mr. Darwin believed that the favored race was not anything but his race. And he happened to be a light-colored Englishman. Yes, indeed. He pre presented a falsehood that was birthed in the pit of hell, and he picked it up as genuine scripture. Now, even though he had a degree in theology, he studied to be an Anglican priest, but he dropped out because he really wasn't doing real well. But he carried the cancer cells of his thinking into life when he began to teach the horrendous lie of evolution. Billions and trillions of years. If you haven't had it yet, you got to stick around for another 10 trillion years and you might get it then. The only problem is God didn't make you to live much longer than 120 years. So you may have a problem. And that's why they're trying to figure out some sort of chemical that they can shoot into your body so you can live forever here. Who wants to live forever here in hell? I want to live forever and shall live forever. And those who know Christ as Savior and Lord will live forever with him there in the heavenly abode, in the place that he tells us in John 14, 6, I go to prepare a place for you. And he's prepared that place for you if you know him by faith. Trust him today if you don't. Say, God, save me. Yes, I admit, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I have, I, I, I know you're trying to break through. I know I need to come clean. And when you get that far, go to step three. Walk up, respectfully knock on God's courthouse door. And upon God's invitation, come in. Come in. Is it, did I hear someone say come in? And you go in and you see God high and lifted up on the throne. And you say to God, God, You've been drawing me to you. I admit I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I need a Savior. And God, I've done so many things in my life, so many sins, and I deserve a devil's hell, but I understand that Jesus has died for me in my place. And I need for you to forgive me. Please, God, forgive me of my sin 
against you. And watch what God does in your life. He wants to do that today in your life. Will you let him? Will you trust him? Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Ask, seek, and knock. And you will be joyfully surprised when you see the Savior's face as you call upon him by faith. Let's close in prayer. Father, we bless you and thank you for what you've done in our hearts today. And may that spiritual principle that we have learned again, perhaps anew, maybe afresh, we asked, we sought, and we knocked. In all responses, we got a response from you and you forgiven and cleansed us and made us new we trust you father to have your way in us to make us the type of people that you want us to be one that will bring honor and glory to your name and blessing to our neighbors and we'll give you the praise and the glory for it in jesus name i pray amen and until we meet again at his pasture, worship celebration, come and join us each day, each time, as we break the bread of life and dig into the scriptures that we may learn the marvelous truths that God has been wanting to get through to you and I for our benefit, blessing and the peace of God. God bless you. Thank you for being here with us today. We'll look forward to seeing you the next time. God bless you. Goodbye.